What's up everyone, Scotty from Trouble Studios. Today we are finally going to be looking at these Hertz drums. Now, I've been sneaking these drums into a number of songs already on the channel. You heard these drums, for example, on the solar guitar demo that I did. These are the same drums. Now, if Hertz is kind of ringing a bell for you, that's because this drum library has been created by Hertz Studio. Yes, the exact same studio that's worked with Behemoth, Vader, Hate, Yes, they the literally that famous Polish um, metal studio. They have created their own drum library. Now, one of the reasons I was really excited about this is because the guys at Hertz have a very interesting way that they work on drums, right? Yes, they can sound programmed and they can sound plastic and they can sound really sampled, but somehow they have the attack, the bite, and they cut through the mix. So the great thing about this is the processing and the genius of those guys and how they have worked on drums for the last 20 years or more is now in this plugin and we get to use it. And it's fantastic. So you heard the demo track here just now. The drums are great. Very little work needs to go into the drums, okay? So in this video, I wanna go over a couple of the most unique aspects of this because I mean a drum library is a drum library right we pretty much got the idea uh, of what it's supposed to be and what you're supposed to be able to do and there are a couple of things that set this one apart so first and foremost let's kind of close this actually and let's show you the MIDI okay because the first thing you're going to notice is the MIDI looks complicated and that comes down to the fact that they have sampled the like for example tom 2 center and tom 2 side now there's only one other library that i personally know of that did this and it did it five or six years ago and that was stigmatized drums from a, from a, a company out in greece where they sampled a essentially a right hand and a left hand now tom center and tom side is basically the same thing because if you think about it when you're playing drums if you come and you start playing, you're actually never playing directly in the center when you're taking two hands. So it's very common, you know how many times have you seen this, right? If you go to a drum, uh, a drummer's tom, for example, and the really good drummers have a hole like that where they always hit in the dead center of the drum. Really bad drummers, it's like they hit the drum wherever. And there are different tonal aspects of the drum if you don't hit it dead center, okay? So this makes humanizing the drums uh, even more interesting because you can basically go, okay, I have a dead center hit, and then I hit, have a hit that's a little bit off to the side. And that helps create a difference in the tone of the drum. So instead of having just a, a drum machine tom sound, you can get already a different articulation just because it's a different part of the drum being sampled. Um, then it's up to you to humanize it correctly. Now. The other thing here is that they have snare, edge side, rim shot center, rim shot side, cross stick. A lot of dynamics on the snare. Uh, this is pretty unusual. Uh, often you'll see like center, edge, rim shot, stick. That's, that's usually like the bare bones of what a good library should have. We've got center, edge center, side, edge side, you know, and all of these different articulations lend itself to certain playing uh, mechanics. You know, if you're laying into the snare in a really sn slow groove like we are right here, you can see, it's definitely snare center. Now, if I'm doing more of a skank beat, it's just by the way it works sometimes, we sort of will play off to the side or we won't hit as hard or both, which is what I'm simulating here. And then during very fast blast beat, I'm actually pushing the stick way out to the side of the drum because that also happens, but it's also helping accentuate, it's also helping differentiate the different articulations of the snare. So we don't have the same snare center all the time and have to work really hard to make it sound different through humanization. We can just use a different articulation, bring down the velocity a little bit, so to humanize it, and then we have a completely different result, okay? So there are tons of articulations here uh, to include, you know, the, the tom, center, and sides. We've got crash, crash choke. All the stuff here for cymbals is pretty much par for the course and what you would expect. You've got ride tip, ride side, ride bell, ride uh, 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 ride side. I don't know why I put it like that. And ride muted. You know, that's more of a crash. Bell, obviously. Side. 
tip. Now the cool thing about this is I didn't do it in this song because I didn't feel it needed, is you can go between like a ride sag and a ride tip and it changes the articulation of how things will sound. I can show you very quickly. So if I just kind of do this. Now, I opted not to do it, do it during that part because most people will be fairly consistent when they're playing the ride at that slow of a tempo. It's just bing, 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 bing. So generally you'll be pretty consistent. I just um, humanized the notes a little bit to get more of the dun, 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 dun groove into it. But um, this library works very well with fast music. Um, it's just, it's the way that the guys process the drums. You know, the transients are there, they poke through the mix, there's a lot of snap, uh, and they just, it, it worked without sounding ridiculous, you know, because there are snares out there where you just kind of tap it and it's an explosion. And I think there's a meme online where someone's doing a snare roll and it's just a machine gun because you can do that. But here we still have an element of neutral, natural sounding drums, but they are processed in a degree that can work uh, in a super dense mix. And not only, I'll show you guys some of the presets later on. So these are the drums um, that I programmed. And the other cool thing that I really liked about working with this, the great, this, this a side feature of why I personally enjoy the Tom Center and the Tom Side. You know, if I decide, for example, that, you know what, there's not enough differentiation in velocity between the Tom rolls, like they sound too machine-like, instead of having to go again through all of the Tom hits and s select every other hit again, we have the ability to just drag select like this because I know the Tom sides are gonna be the weak hand. And here we go, I can just literally click and drag. I have all of the left hand articulations and I can move them up or down as needed. So it's it's definitely an aspect of speed here that I really enjoy. Um, symbols. Symbols are always the weakest point of a drum library. Most of the symbols here are pretty cool. The only one I personally don't like that much is this one here. Uh, it's a custom dark 20. It just in comparison, like these are very snappy. And then that one's just like really washy for some reason. Um, don't know why, don't know how it is, but you can sort of work with it by uh, increasing the um, volume either by the trim knob here or the actual volume knob or decreasing the reverb and the amount of ambience. Um, I don't know, I just think that that particular symbol really sticks out. It's just like you have, bam, bam, super washing. So I would like to hear a more fast symbol there instead of a washy, slower one. Um, I'll go over the interface here a little bit more in just a second. But the as far as using the drums, if you can program drums, this will be really easy and intuitive for you to learn. Uh, set up your drum map correctly and you'll, you'll be totally fine. Um, I beta tested this and in the beginning it's loaded horrifically slow. Uh, they have fixed that significantly. Like right now I'm on version 1.0.4. Uh, the loading times are significantly faster. Like if I change a preset, it's about eight seconds. Uh, when I'm loading from zero, it's about 28 to 40 seconds. And generally I'm fine with that because if I'm loading something in, I've gone to you know get a coffee or I've gone to go to the bathroom or I've gone to see what my daughter is doing. I'm usually, when I'm loading something in, in the beginning of the session, I'm generally not sitting here waiting. So it doesn't bother me that much. Now, the UI itself, very interesting UI. Uh, when you look at it, it's all self-explanatory. You pretty much are used to seeing this if you've worked with other drum libraries in the past. You got a mixer knob, self-explanatory. You got all your faders here, uh, 10 channels, 11 to 20 channels, and then the groups. Now the groups are already routed within the instrument. So if I press play, it's already routed. You can't really change or do anything about that. However, it does mean that the ease of use is, oh, my kicks are loud. I can, I have two options. I can come into the plugin itself and turn them down. Or, you know, if you are doing a massive multiple output routing system, you can create the bus in your DAW and do it. <clears throat> Which, you know, why? If they already have it in the plugin, I think that's great. Then you have the different libraries and the samples that you can choose from. Here you can select uh, which instrument, either here or by clicking. Okay. 
So when you click, for example, the kick or the snare, it shows right there what you're selecting, or you can just come down here and select it yourself. Um, it's good to have both ways. I think that's pretty cool. Grooves now. Uh, they are coming up with a lot of interesting grooves. Now, if you look at this here, you're going to see a lot of time signatures that you're not used to seeing and BPMs that you're not used to seeing as well. So we have rock, not 4-4. Four, four. And here, if you write a lot of interesting riffs, 7-4, 11-8, 16 you've got grooves for that. You're not going to have grooves in many other situations unless you program them yourselves. So funk, new metal, rock. Now how the grooves work, it's like everything else. You know, you come down here, you click, click the play button, because if you just click the, the square, something's gonna happen. Come down here, hit the play button. And then obviously click the stop button to stop it. But here you have two rows of hi-hats, two rows of rides, and then a row of mix. So hi-hat and ride, intros, endings, and fills. It's pretty cool that instead of showing everything, you know, and trying to put it in a timeline, you just gotta use your ears. So if you press play and you're like. Cool, I like that, that's awesome. Then all you need to do is you can just, let me show you real quick, but let me jump out of here. Just grab this little thing here and drag it to your MIDI track and boom, there it is. And it shows exactly how it was programmed. So if you're having struggle programming with this particular library, it'll show you the velocities here and how it worked. Cool. Up here we have the preset library. Now, um, they have different packs. So a blue, a red, and a white pack. A blue pack, as you can see here, alternative rock, British pop, classic metal, power metal, progressive rock. And these are all for different sounds. We'll go through those a little bit later. Uh, alternative rock, jank, funk, pop, stoner, and then I spend all my time in the white pack because I do metal or rock or, or rock metal, right? And then um, here you have the audio tab. This is where you do all of your routing. This is the MIDI, so you can change the articulation of what note is playing what, so you can remap everything. They have a Hertz default. If you click here, for example, if you use any one of these, it's already been pre uh, arranged for you so you don't have to do it yourself awesome i love it when um uh, uh drum plugins do that because it is kind of a pain in the ass sometimes if you have different drum maps and you're trying to a b or listen to different drum sounds and you always are constantly like oh jesus i don't have a drum map for this this is taken care of these are the settings audio libraries midi libraries and then where they are located okay now when we come up here to the mixer in the library, for example, we always have this right side shown, okay? Again, uh, let me show actually the this one, okay? So the DI, which is the, the, the actual close source, the sub, the effects, if there are any, and then overheads, room, and reverb. We have basically the same functionality over here in the right side navigation bar. So if we click snare, we are showing DI sub effects. These are where it's routed, and then we can change how much of it that we want. If we want no overhead, like we want to just nuke the snare and the overheads for some reason, you can just turn it down. And the tooltip comes up and tells you overhead microphone volume. It takes a while for the tooltips to show. Maybe that could be a little bit faster, um, but you know, it's self-explanatory here. Now, the other thing too, ambience for every piece of the kit, you can see you can change how much reverb or room that you want in it. Sometimes in some libraries, you know, they're super dry, just like, oh my God, bone dry. And you're sitting there running in the dog, trying to pass through a bunch of, you know, like a room sound or reverb of some kind to make the drums not so dry. Here you can adjust that. If I, for example, hit the symbol, I change the directionality of it and also the bigness of it. So the application of this could be if you want to simulate a smaller drum room, for example, you have like a really tight three piece or something, you can bring the drums in, which would be great so you can keep that real intimate feel. So you have all of that here at your fingertips, which you can do. I don't remember. So let's go back to, I guess it doesn't matter. I have a preset here. 
Um, and then we have velocity settings. We can tell the instrument, yep, we don't want to play anything below 60, for, ex for example. Also, we don't want to play anything above 100, okay? Generally, I, I don't touch these in general because I just, I only write MIDI at 115 velocity anyway. I will almost never do 120 or 127. You know, if you guys are in my metal drum programming course, you know all that already. Um, there you go. The dynamic knob here is exactly what it says. It sets the dynamic curve. So if you crank this to 127, you have no dynamics. There will be no soft touches or anything like that. I would recommend just to keep this at zero, keep, and then don't worry about it. I wouldn't touch this one at all, okay? Now, the next thing here is reverse. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna reverse the sample. You might be thinking, why would you wanna do that on drums? Drums are transients. How can you reverse a tom hit? Wrong, wrong. How many times have you been programming drums and you're like, man, it would be really cool if I could like a little swell here and then, you know, wouldn't get the cymbal. Correct, okay? If you, if you click, so for example, let's, here's the cymbal, right? Now if I hit reverse and then, there we go. We can reverse the sample there and use that for our swell. Okay, you can change the length. I can make it really long, for example. Okay, and that helps make songs feel way more realistic because sometimes if you're programming these swells, like, okay, uh, you have to experiment. Like, do I need to do 64th notes here? Can I do 30 second triplets? How do I do the, you know, and sometimes you start getting into the aspect of the symbol and it sounds ridiculous. So it's really neat that there's a reverse function here that you can use if you want to reverse a symbol hit, something like that. Now, not to be outdone, of course, Hertz drums, as far as I can tell, it's all about control of your drum sound, right? We even have the ASDR curve. So attack, so attack, my God, release, sustain, and decay. Now these are, this particular module will be great for shaping your cymbals, for example. Um, again, if we have the cymbal here, this is off, okay? For example, uh, the, the release is off. That means that the symbol is just gonna go until the sample ends. So however it was sampled is however it will play. But if we wanna turn this on, you know, we start delegating milliseconds to it. You know, we're telling the sample, okay, you need to stop playing after, you know, 1200 milliseconds. Why would this be important? So if you're noticing, for example, like, man, my symbols are just going on forever. I don't want them to go on forever. They're muddying up the mix or they're getting in the way of the vocals. You can come in here and you can basically tell the program, you know, chill out, just cut off the cymbals after X amount of time, okay? And that way you can clean up that part of the frequency spectrum for your vocals or whatever it is that you're doing up there. And it's just more control of the program itself. Um, if you don't have this in the drum pro uh, program and there's no way to control the actual samples and, and the length of it, you're just kind of shit out of luck. You know, and it's really annoying. And it's one of those things where I didn't realize how cool this was until I was looking at Hertz drums and playing with it and going, oh, okay, wow. Would have been cool if I was using that the other day on this other mixer, I was having the exact same problem that I just described. So it's just options. Lots of cool things that you can do with the sounds of the drums to control and help keep your uh, drum sound tight or expansive or to get out of the way of other elements of, of, of the song, okay? So w once you look at the UI and you understand it, it's super simple. It's not difficult at all. Uh, it's everything that you would expect to see in any library, you know, routing, things like that, okay? And uh, they sound great. They're really great. They have a really unique sound. I really like using these for fast tempo music now. So that Solar demo that I did, this demo, obviously, anything that I know that's going to have a lot of double bass or a lot of blast beats and I want that transient to poke through without the snare being, hey, how you doing? You're like in your face all the time. I'm using this, all right? Now, the one thing probably that I could say about this that is a little bit annoying right now is that there is no way to automatically do a multiple output routing into your DAW. When, when this loads, you know, I have the outputs right now, everything's just one. 
And if you want to change the outputs, you have to go one at a time and literally click through this. Um, I already told the guys like that you can't, this is, you know, and they, that's already being worked on. They're already developing right now. It will be in a future update. So whenever you're watching this video, if you can do multiple output routing with the click of the button, just ignore what I just said. But as it is right now, it's really annoying. So what I would highly suggest is do it once and then save a preset like I've done here. Because the multiple output routing will be saved in the preset. And that way you don't have to do it again. And so, and then all you would have to do is, you know, come into Cubase and just make sure your outputs are all um, good to go. And then you don't have to sit here in the, in the UI anymore. Um, a small nitpick could be that uh, the U, UI is not resizable. You know, I'm on a 5K 27 inch monitor right now. And if I didn't have my glasses on, I wouldn't be able to make heads or tails of this interface. Now, if I'm on a 1080p monitor, obviously this interface will be gigantic and it'll be totally fine. But as we're moving on for, for larger and larger resolutions, I think it would behoove the guys at Hertz to eventually make the UI resizable so that dudes who are on ginormous, you know, mon 4K, you know, 37 inch monitors, this thing is gonna be this big. So uh, to make it a little bit larger, I think would be a good idea, okay? Other than that, I really appreciate that it's, uh, it's, it's its its own standalone thing, you know? Like, I have no problem with contact personally. I literally don't care. But it is cool that I don't have to load contact and then load the library, you know, and like go through like a wrapper. It's just, here's the plugin, it's standalone, bam, good to go. Um, I personally think that's pretty cool. So uh, the other things really is that if you click here, um, you can literally get help from the internet and the videos are very good. Like if you have a question about any of these modules that I glanced over and maybe you're like, huh? You can click that button. You'll get a deca detailed, detailed, like two to three minute video. They're very good. Very good. Um, fantastic at explaining how the, how the technical side of everything works. So working with the drums, awesome. They're really fun to program because uh, there's so much control, okay? And the other thing too about the velocities, let me see if I can find this really quick. I will cut to it. Yeah, here it is. So all of you that have taken my Metal Drum Programming Mastery course, I showed you guys step-by-step step how to find the velocities in every sample, regardless of the drum library you're looking at. Here they have just the groups. Here are the six dynamic groups and here's the velocity range. And they even spent time to suggest which velocity uh, range would help for the type of uh, uh, notes that you're doing or type of beats that you're doing. I think this is absolutely something that every library needs to be doing right now. Um, I want to see dynamic range PDF files of every library now because I'm tired of wasting my time trying to figure out, wow, is this the correct the velocity layer for blah, 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 blah. I just want to go, oh, so I want to do ghost notes. So let's see, we're looking at 44 to 22. Sweet. Let's have a look. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Oh, I can even go to one to 21 for super, super weak light ghost notes. Awesome, let's try that. And they're also talking about 16th and 32nd notes, i.e., for example, if this song is at 130 or 260, if you wish, and we are doing some really fast notes. I typically don't go that low to 65 to 45, but it's good to know and understand where in the velocity range I should be working. So big ups to Hertz Drums for creating that table for me and sending it to me and go here, by the way, here are the dynamic groups, here's the velocity range. Don't have to guess, all right? Uh, let's have a look-see at this really fast blast beat over here. Um, it's one thing to hear it in the mix. Let's just go ahead and hear it right now. So this, a particular blast beat that I'm simulating is one that I used to play all the time. Um, it's not even my idea. It's, uh, I started doing it because when, when I was playing Hammer Down the Nails by uh, Vital Remains or De Christianize, yes, I used to be a good drummer. Uh, I would do this particular blast beat where I would accent the first beat, take a little bit of a break, and then blast through the rest, accent the first beat. It just basically sounding like this. And 
Okay, and the reason I would do that is because the band that I was in at the time just loved blast beats and that's all the guy wanted to do. And instead of just using the cymbal all the time with the ride, with the bell or whatever, I would just start doing it with the hands. And so I was like, oh, let's do the same thing here. So we're really accentuating the 6-8 feel of the song when we do this. So it sounds very musical, even though we're just blasting away on the snare. Uh, so the snare velocity is quite low. We're in the 90s to the 80s a little bit. Accentuate, accentuating, accentuating, oh my God. Accenting, oof, English, um, the main downbeat of every measure here. And then of course the hi-hats are doing the same thing because this is simulating a right-handed blast and then just doing uh, the, the notes on the hi-hat and all around the cymbals and stuff, so, yep. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Um, yeah, I really have nothing else to say about the drums. They, uh, they are affordable. You can buy the, just the, the drums itself. I think it's like 60 bucks. Um, they have the different packs. They're all add-on packs, but you could just get the entire thing. Uh, actually, just pull up the website here. Yeah, exactly. So, the entire pack the Hertz Jumps Bundle is 200 euro. However, you can choose between different versions of it. So the, the software, the Hertz Drums itself, Hertz Drums Lite, all the different packs. For example, if you only want to do metal, you only care about metal, you could do, yeah, you know, I'll get the Hertz Drums and then the white pack, okay? So it's still gonna be less than other companies where you get just the sampler and then you need to get the other packs, right? Which are a bit more expensive. Okay, then they have MIDI grooms, uh, MIDI grooves, this particular one specifically not 4-4, so every type of groove that's not 4-4, um, and I know they're coming out with more, and we might actually be working together on something like that uh, for a different pack, uh, but yeah, so Hertz drums, um, you know, it's, it's cool to see, where the hell is the button, here it is, it's cool to see studios, you know, that have been in the business for uh, decades, and have worked with amazing bands and amazing drummers who are putting their knowledge to use in, in programs like this so that we can use them, you know. If we don't want a huge bombastic drum sound and we want something tight, uh, we could try this. You know, it's very natural sounding. The toms are very natural sounding. Uh, the kicks are great. Snare has a, it's a nice crack, woody type of snare. Um, and oh, the one thing I didn't show you guys, let's before we move along here, same thing with choosing the grooves, okay? You can choose different uh, different mics, okay? And it's basically different captures of the tom. So mic B for, for this tom. I can select different ones. So this is tom one, tom two, tom three, tom four, tom five. So the selection would be between mic A, B, or C. So I can have mic A or B or mic A or mic C. It's very minute different, there are very minute differences, but they are, they are there, and again, I think this is also based on the pack. Uh, let me, so if I, so I'm clicking with the left mouse button to, to um, audition it, and if I wanted it, then I would click with the right mouse button, and then it's selected now. And you can see it's been loading. So these are the whites. Now, we move over here. This is the red pack, and then this would be the blue pack. It's a good idea that they made the colors a bit different here, and it's exactly the same. So I'm auditioning this. I'm like, eh, I don't really know about that. Let's try the red pack. No, no, no. what about the blue pack? So you can very quickly audition the different uh, uh, samples which is awesome because some of the libraries out now there are moving away from some of the quick clicking where you can easily audition every sample and it's really annoying to have to go through a drop down memory menu every time to try a different snare drum. I can just click snare drum and go. Just click, 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 find the one that I like and we're done. So very great, it's, it's I like it, it's great. So there we go. That's pretty much it, guys. There's really nothing else to discuss. The, it, it looks complicated, but the UI is very 
succinct. It's very easy to understand. Everything is right where you need it. There's nothing, nothing more, nothing less. And the main thing is that they sound great. Uh, so definitely uh, would recommend them. Yes, Hertz Drums, uh, this is a pig review. Hertz Drums had paid me to make this video. However, as I told them, and as you guys know, uh, the videos you don't see are videos where I didn't like the product. Okay, and I didn't think the product was cool. So I've used it already. I told you already in the beginning of the video, I've already snuck this in to two different demo tracks that you guys have heard on the, on the channel already. I just didn't tell you, all right? So they're good. I like them, I've been using them and they're, I will continue to use them, okay? So link down below to check out uh, the drums. And if you guys, like I said, I, I, I talked about programming these things and how blah, blah, blah. If you guys are struggling with programming metal drums, don't forget I have Metal Drum Programming Mastery that's also down below A to Z on how to think like a drummer and program drums because I am a drummer um, and I know how to program drums. Been doing it for 20 years. So if if you want to get this and then learn how to program and use this thing, you can, you know, that's a that's a great, great idea. Okay. So Hertz Drums, check them out. Give them a spin and let me know what you think about them. All right. So thanks you guys for watching the video. I will see you guys in the next one.